Welcome to Gold Star Radon's presentation of a more in-depth look at a radon mitigation system. As described in our video of basic radon mitigation systems, the goal of a sub-slab depressurization system is to get an entire suction under the basement floor. As important as it is to get a suction under the entire basement floor, it is just as critical not to oversize the radon fan. As you can see here, the estimated electrical costs for running a radon away RP140 fan is around $326 over a 10 year span, the average life of a fan. Compare this to the radon away's RP265, which can cost over $2,300. This is almost a $2,000 savings if you can use the smaller fan. In order to select the lowest cost fan, but still remove the radon, it is critical for the radon mitigator to perform a pressure test, also known as a communication test. This is done by drilling a hole where the intended suction point is going to be installed, a vacuum or even the radon fan is installed in this hole, then at the furthest points from the suction hole, tiny test holes are drilled in the floor. A high-tech micromanometer is used to view how much, if any, air is being pulled across the entire floor. If your radon mitigator does not explain or perform this process for you, they most likely will install a larger, more expensive fan. Not only does a mitigator have to verify they can use a small fan, but there are also very important steps needed to be taken in order to achieve the smaller fan. Some pits are a large opening in the basement floor and must be dealt with. The lid of the sump pit must be sealed and be made airtight. If there is no floor drain in the basement, a special one-way drain can be added to the lid. Along with sealing the sump pit, it is just as critical to seal floor cracks. The most common and most important is usually the crack between the floor and wall joint. By performing as much sealing as possible, it allows a radon mitigator to use a smaller fan. Most radon systems use a single suction point. However, in some homes, multiple suction points are needed. This has to do with what material is underneath the floor. If the home has crushed stone, it is easier to pull air. If the home has packed clay or tight soil, multiple suction points may be necessary. Another area that needs suction are crawl spaces. If the crawl space has a dirt floor, the mitigator will install a membrane over the dirt. This is what they call a sub-membrane depressurization system. A pipe can then be inserted under the membrane to achieve full suction on the crawl space. It is also important to note some homes have both a basement and a slab on grade construction. A suction point may also be necessary under the slab on the, on the slab on grade section of the house. This is most typical in a bi or split level home. However, in many new homes, they have a family room which has a slab on grade construction. This slab on grade that needs suction can sometimes be reached from the basement through the wall. Many homeowners ask, what maintenance is involved with running a mitigation system? The simple answer is, there is no maintenance. The only thing that ever really goes wrong is eventually the radon fan will die. These fans typically last around 10 years. The number one cause for radon fan failure is due to water. Radon systems produce a gallon of water a day due to condensation, not rainwater. It is important that the radon mitigator install a water bypass system. This will allow the condensation to drain and not let it run back through the fan. Another common myth about the radon system are the U-tube shaped manometers installed on the piping. This manometer measures the amount of air pressure in the pipe, contrary to common belief that this U-tube is not a radon level. Radon levels should be tested every two years with the radon mitigation system. Radon is a very serious concern and should not be taken lightly. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any further questions on a mitigation system, please give Gold Star Radon a call. Thank you.